Well, folks, Friday just uh, ended on the stock market, and we are doing something extra special just for you. Uh, we are going to go ahead and talk about the stock market, what happened this week. We are going to talk about Tesla having an amazing week, I think the best week since 2013. And we're going to talk about the Fed and what they may or may not do next week and see what the impact might be. To have this conversation with me, the one and only Mr. Dan Bird. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. And a lot of other things to talk about as well. Absolutely. So uh, why don't you kind of set it up for us? What are we going to get into? What happened this week? What's next week? And uh, just lots of good stuff. All right. We are on a short time frame. So we're going to make this quick. My newsletter. If anyone's interested, just send me an email to breakpointtrading at gmail.com. And I'll add you to the list. I'll send you last week's. Um, here is the Fed for next week. Yeah, and it's it's interesting. There's actually a third thing that I would add there that I think would be more interesting. So every day there's a Fed day, folks. You'll get the statement, which is basically the raise, and then you'll get a raise. And then you will have Powell talk at 2.30 or 30 minutes later. That right. is going to be interesting. My wild-ass guess is Powell is going to come out super hawkish because it's the last thing he can do. He's going to try to kick the market one more time. Uh, but yeah, I think, um, yeah, that's what I think. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I, I love it when you, all my guests disagree with me. I, I share my, my thoughts. And if you disagree, by all means, please. Share. I don't, I don't think he's going to do that. Okay. Awesome. I think he is seeing some other things that uh, are going to start causing him some real concerns like disinflationary items. Oh, no, don't get me wrong. I agree that he is seeing it, but he knows this is his last chance to talk tough. He just saw Tesla have the best week since 2013. He just saw, I don't know. That doesn't mean anything. Week. No, I'm just saying he's he saw risk on this week, in my opinion. Yeah, but that, that again, that doesn't mean anything. Okay. All right. Um, he, 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 I think, is beginning to understand I hope that he's beginning to understand that we we are we may be on the edge of a disinfl disinflationary cycle, and disinflation yep. is worse than inflation. Uh, well, okay. I think you're trying to say deflation. Disinflation is deflation. Inflation. What, yeah, yep. whatever you want to call it. Well, we, did, well, you're going to have excess, excess inventory. I mean, you just look at the the Intel report. Oh, Intel is horrible. Gives horrible. you a clue for that. Yeah, they've got they've got a ton of inventory that they can't get rid of. Okay. Back orders. Yeah. That's just the beginning. I mean, that's that's deflation. That's worse than inflation. Okay. So All right. I don't I don't I think talking tough is going to cause him more harm than good. Well, he, the will good lose, news is... he will lose credibility if he does that. All right. Well, we I mean, will know he already, he's already on the verge of losing credibility. So <laughs> that'll just make that'll just make it worse. Yeah. And then Friday, uh, it's interesting. Friday is a big day also. Unemployment or the I'm sorry. Yeah. Unemployment. Unemployment claims come out. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's, that's projection that's is 3.6 percent. That's interesting. Well, you've seen the weekly claims. The weekly claims have come in low. I mean, last week was like 180. It's, it, it was a thousand off the cycle low. There was one week we printed 179. Uh, right. Now, obviously, that could be adjusted next week. But that was that was way below expectations at 180. Yeah. Yeah. Pre, um, initial. Yeah. I don't know what it was this week. Next week, the previous was 186. Okay. So right. um, this little chart over here on the right, that, by the way, this is, this is all in my newsletter this week. So I put some cartoons like this in here. This is a good one. There's a new sheriff in town. The bull is back. Wow. You're saying you now, do you really believe that? Are we going to look at that and we're going to see Dan Bird talk about a bull market or you yeah, just think yeah. this is a, okay. All right. No, no, we, we are on the verge of a raging bull. Really? Yeah. Okay. Here's where we are. And it's interesting because I talked to a lot of friends and folks and, you know, just different people that I meet up with and they're all negative. They're all, they all think the market's going down. They, they don't want to be in the market. You know, they're discouraged. They're complaining about their 401k. He said nothing but bearish, bearish talk everywhere. Oh. And in fact, my neighbor, whose son is a financial planner, 
Mm-hmm. And I told him, I said, you know, it's, it might be time to get back in. He goes, no, my son told me it's not time yet. You know, it's, it's still a lot to go through. We've got a recession coming. I said, by the time you get to a recession, so oh, yeah. here's, here's a recession right here, a full recession. Yep. And here's where the market will be. When we get to a recession, the market will be halfway to the top already. Mm. This is where we are right now. The market is starting to head up. And we are we are heading towards a recession. All right, so we are okay. right about okay. we are right about there. Interesting. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Awesome. Um, I'll skip more of that for now. So this is the January barometer that I've talked about before, and uh, mm-hmm. this this will go till next Tuesday. You'll be gone, so I'll I'll see if I can do one and put a put a video out there just with me talking to myself. That would be wonderful. That'll give you great practice for what I envision in your future is your own YouTube channel. That would be wonderful. Yeah, I'm probably headed that way. Um, but we've got two more days, Monday and Tuesday. So right now we're at six point oh two percent for for January. Wow. That's a good month. It's a great month. And look where we are right here. So here's 4,100. Here's that level where I said, if we break through that, there's a whole bunch of buy Shorts. stops. Yeah, yeah. Orders sitting right up here. So it's, it's going to be a combination of people having FOMO, thinking they, they've missed out. Do you, do you know how much the market has gone up since the low in October? And, and this, is, this is what I tell all these friends and family that, that talk negative to me about the market. You know, it's everything's bad. And I'm going to guess you know, 15%. 17. percent 17. Okay. Gone up 17% since the low in October already. Yeah, I mean the stocks that uh, I bought during this this time frame are up more than 30%, right? JP Morgan. Yeah. Meta, Meta's up like 50%. Right. Yeah, pretty crazy. Yep. So uh next Tuesday we'll see what this number comes in at. Right now it's 6.02%. And that would put us right here, right smack in the middle of the quadrant number one, very bullish, going back 73 years. That would put us basically at the 10 best January in the last 73 years. Okay. If we ended there. If it goes up on Monday and Tuesday, we'll we'll be even higher. We'll be, you know, seven or eight. Hmm. Of all of the Januaries for the last 73 years. And again, that's on the S&P, right? That's the S&P, but the NASDAQ is similar. Understood. All right. So this is, this is what it looks like. Here's, here's the uh, Fibonacci levels that I've showed before. We are, we've already gone through that one. We've already busted through the 200 day moving average. There's actually another one. I think that's probably shows it better. This is the commodity. Commodities are starting to roll over, by the way. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, but this shows it pretty well. So here's 4,100, that level that, that if we get through that level, mm-hmm. that will be a higher high. Right. And that's something you've told us to look at for at least a month now. Right. That is what will confirm the, a new uptrend. We haven't had that yet. We've had, you know, higher lows and lower lows we started going up here we started going up here but it wasn't a higher high then we went to a lower low went up here but it didn't take out that one went to a lower low another low here we had a high here and then we started coming down then we started going up so now this is a a higher low that's the first step Mm -hmm. step number two is a higher high understand that needs that needs, needs to be a close above this level here okay when that happens, which could be as early as Monday or Tuesday, I thought it might even even be today. But when, as soon as that happens, then the downtrend is over. Okay. And we are in a new bullish uptrend. Hmm. So yes, there's the there's the word. New sheriff in town. It's a new bull market. But just just so I just so I can play the other side, it is possible this crumbles on Monday or Tuesday, and we don't take that forty one hundred out. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything can happen. Of course. I just wanted to put it out there. I like it. Yep. Absolutely. Anything could happen. Okay. 
But frankly, between you and I, I of think, and, and you know, I've said this before, the, the, the market, and I just showed you that graph before, the market is six to nine months ahead of the economy. And I would also argue the market wants to go up. And the market wants to go up. Yeah. So when I say that to people, it's hard to really understand what that means. It's hard to look at this chart right here because mm -hmm. this this really illustrates that, well, here's the market in red and here's the economy in blue. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to understand that when you're just you know in it at the moment. Mm -hmm. But if you look backwards, let's look backwards. Let's say, okay, the market looks six to nine months ahead. So that would mean when we hit this low here in October, six to nine months previous to that is when the market should have started to roll over. Okay. Here's a five-year chart. So so we're we're right here. Here was the low, October. Mm -hmm. Six to nine months before that was here in January. So in January of last year. Well, in fairness, it's April, but I, it's the same deal. Six months. Well, same, same idea. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I get it. I'm just. I mean, nine, I mean, this is no. This is this is month ten. October's month ten. If you go nine you months said, back. Oh, nine months. I'm sorry. I thought you said six. Sorry. Six to, six to nine. Oh, I understand now. Okay. So, okay. That makes sense. Nine. Yeah. Yep. Got so, it. So, if you look backwards with that understanding, then the market should have started rolling over here. And it did. Knowing that the economy was and and the Fed was going to keep raising all through this year, and that's exactly yeah, what happened. Absolutely. I mean, we got the, I think that we got the first Fed rate hike in March. February or was it March? It was in March. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So makes sense. It's important to understand that the reason that I'm, that I'm talking about this is there are a lot of people out there that don't understand how the market works and, and oh, they're all I would scared. Say, I would say they're, most people. They're afraid it's going to go back down. They don't know about secular bull markets and secular bear markets. They're convinced it's going back down. They don't want to get in. Mm -hmm. By the time they get in, by the time the talking heads on CNBC tell you that mm -hmm. it's all clear, we're we're going to be back at another all-time high. Yeah. Okay. Right? So do you want to buy at the top or do you want to buy at the bottom? Hmm. Okay. This is the this is the start of it right here. I mean that chart is pretty clear, I think. So did you did you put any money to work this week personally? Yes, in okay. in uh, semiconductors. Oh really? Wow! After that Intel report or before? Uh, after. Oh wow! Okay. Probably the best time after. Here's yeah, um yeah. here here is a uh, this is a relative chart. So this is relative to the S and P. Mm -hmm. Right. So if it's going up, that means it's outperforming the S and P which is what you sure. want. Yep. This is technology. So focus on this pink line right here. Pink line's headed up and there's the 200 day moving average. And it's been heading up since the beginning of January. Hmm. There are three, actually, let me go back to this one. I was gonna start with this. So this is, this is the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P, these first three up here. All right, the Dow had a really nice run and then it's now, now just going sideways. The NASDAQ, look, the NASDAQ has already broken out above its highs. Mm. The S&P is right on the verge. And I said 4,100, so it's almost there. It actually hit 4,090 today, mm. 4,094, I think. But the NASDAQ's already broken out. Okay. The three aggressive sectors are communication services this is where all the internet stocks are yeah just just again i always love full disclosure one of the stocks i bought this week was i bought a tranche of snap based on our conversation last week right you talked about this communication right. segment and how they were set up last week and i said yeah. you know what i'm going to take a flyer on what i believe to be the most beaten down Right. And uh, I threw some money at Snap. Uh, I think yeah, that might that Thursday. might end up being a, a good move. Yeah. So this one, communication services, look, look what it's doing. Yeah. It's well above its previous high. Yep. Um, technology is over here. This one. 
Yep. It hasn't broken out above its previous high yet, but it's getting there, getting close. And the, then the other one is uh, discretionary down here. Oh, wow. It has already broken out. Yeah, look at that. Those are the three aggressive sectors. Those are the ones that will lead the market higher. And they're all breaking out right now. Okay. Now, the defensive sectors, staples. Look at staples. In fact, I'll go back to this chart right here. And this will make it very clear. Let's look at staples. Look at that. Jeez. Oh, look at that yeah. pink line. Woo. Now, staples, staples is the area that the big institutions want to be in. So let me let me ask you this. When you're going question. into a recession. So I want to ask this. So this this I mean, I could look at all of this, and part of me thinks this is just risk on. Um, trading and it's interesting. I was going to say retail is coming back, but that's not that's not kind of how this is going, right? Every, all retail investors are still scared. So this is just Wall Street getting ahead of this, and it does does feel like risk is on. So mm -hmm. is this is this the market having hopium that maybe they get a fate uh, a rate pause on the first? I mean, does the market really think a pause is possible, or have they no. been in a quarter? No, they're expecting a quarter. Point. But then they're expecting Powell at 2.30 to be kind of, hey, this could be the last one. We're market dependent. Nothing's guaranteed. Are they are they basically saying March is a pause? He won't say this is the last one. He probably won't say it's a pause. Okay. He probably will say, you know, he might say data dependent. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, but no matter what he says, the market does not believe he is going to do much more. He might do another one in March, but right. even if then, he does, but then the market done. is going to overlook that. Yeah, the no, market... I totally agree. With, I totally agree. One of the things that I've been trying to get people to realize is we've just got to get fed to terminal rate. Once they're there, they're no longer a problem. Then right. everything gets to readjust. And I think I think they're they are already no longer a problem. This is this is retail, by the way. Look at retail. This is again oh, yeah. um, okay. to the compared to the S and P. So. If it's going up, that means it's outperforming the S and P. In your portfolio, you want to outperform the index. Now that's so interesting because retail has been, generally speaking, not a great report with some exceptions. Right. Because because to your point about earlier about inventory stacking, I think even Lululemon came out and said that they're they're having to end of season discounts a little bit more than usual. Oh yeah, you're going to see discounting all over the place soon. Yeah, and I'm just wondering why retail would be doing that. I don't maybe I don't know. Um, utilities, utilities is one that should be going up if we're heading into a bad cycle or a recession. Right. True. Okay. Look at utilities. I mean, it's the it's the aggressive sectors. Here's communication services. This this has been horrible all year. Yep. All the from year. the beginning of the year, it just went straight down. Kept going up and hitting that red line, the 50 day. Kept hitting it, getting rejected until beginning of this year. Mm. Now it's taking off. Um, consumer discretionary. The things that you want to buy, not the things that you have to buy. This is this uh, the, the number one stock in this, by the way, is Tesla. So you would yeah. expect to see this going up. Yeah, but Tesla had their best week since like, 2013 or something just a yeah. wild so amazing week so that's tesla right there you can see you know what a huge run up it had right there yeah went from for them. 20, 25 points basically in one day good for them yeah. one huge Whoever's volume in tesla good for you huge volume too yeah oh, good for them so my point is this is the vix look at the vix yeah, the VIX. I can't believe this thing's like at sub nineteen now. Yeah, that's right. It's uh at nineteen eighteen fifty one, mm. and continues to drop. Even though the even though the ten year Treasury is just hanging out at three and a half percent. Yeah, it'll be. It, I mean, really. So the thirtieth or the thirty first is Monday, right? And then the thirtieth is. The Fed uh, meeting is Tuesday 30... or Wednesday? So it's Wednesday. The meeting is Tuesday and Wednesday. The 31st okay. is Tuesday. 
February 1st is when they'll do the rate hike. Right. So when you look out to next week, what what could be a fly in the ointment? What could what could surprise the market and knock this over? Um I think the the Fed meeting and the interest rate hikes are already baked in. The non farm payrolls, I mean that could do that could be a fly in the ointment if it comes in really strong. Right. So so back to the Fed meeting. So again, I think everybody and their brother expects a quarter. I would expect most people think Powell's gonna be kind of middle of the road. So if he came out like if they came out with a fifty basis point move, that would be shocking, right? That would probably shock the, the market. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to play out what what might be a fly in the oil because anytime something feels so good and so certain, I get very, very nervous. I'm like, you there's some something out of a left field is gonna knock us over. Here's February. This is from uh Stock Traders Almanac. Oh, look at February. Wow. So the interesting thing about this are the dotted lines. So the dotted lines represent pre-election. Oh, interesting. This is what happens in the year before a major election. All right. You can see at the end of February, the divergence. At the end of February, historically, this goes back uh, 75 years. So this is before a presidential election. Which is obviously yeah. This is this is the year before a presidential election. Right. So twenty three right. before twenty four. That's the dot. Those are the dotted lines. The the solid lines are everything. All years together. Are the other three years right? No, it's all years together, including oh, the dotted. Oh, so you just broke out the okay. Got it. Got it. Right. Got it. Right. So all years together, the market goes down the end of February, but in a year before a major election, it Not a bad goes month. sideways and maybe a little bit up even. All right. All right. So we've got this. We've got the non-farm payrolls and uh, rate hike next week. CPI okay. report on the fourteenth. Oh, that'll be an interesting. That one. one. That one will be interesting. Yeah, and I think we talked about that last week in your playlist. That's the one that I'm personally nervous about because it yeah. it'll real. It's going to depend what week they got the inflation. Right. Um. And I'm not. I'm not sure that's going to come in. I. That's the one that freaks me out. That's the one that makes me nervous. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely higher than it was last month. It, that exactly right. Every everything is oil, gas, lumber. The CRB is kind of right where it ended last month. Yeah. They're starting to roll over. So, but we won't. We don't have much time left. So. Yeah. Well, that's not when. The, yeah, that won't be. We, they won't be taking the data from this week. It, it'll right. be so, it'll be last week of the week before. Yeah. So these are all the rate hikes. You can see the first one, the 25 was on 317. Oh, there you go. Thank you. 54 75s in a row, then a 50. And then we, and then we will bookend it with a 25. Yeah, I, I certainly and thankfully called 25. I've called this whole thing remarkably well. And, and I will say that I'm standing by my call that we get a final 25 in March and then they are done. Right. But that's uh I'm yeah so the, the talk the talk then and maybe even this next one next meeting the talk will be you know it looks like our plan is working exactly um there's there's signs that especially if they get well the, the, they'll have the meeting before the the uh, jobs number but if they get a higher unemployment rate mm-hmm. if that goes to three six or three seven or three even three eight yeah they're gonna they'll be happy about that okay. but the talk then will be not about future hikes, but the talk will be about how long we are going to keep it where it is. Okay. So that's the job owning that Powell will do. You know, we're, we're, our plan is working. We want to make sure it continues to work. We're going to keep the rates as high, as high as they are right now for an extended period of time. And I can't tell you when that's going to be, but it's going to be a very long time. Exactly. No, but it won't, but it won't be. He'll, he'll be cutting rates next year. I, I think. I'm sorry, you said next year, but I don't think you made. I mean, this year. I'm sorry, this year. Yeah, I believe he cuts next year. You believe he cuts this year. I'm still in 2022. So. Yeah, I understand. I just want to make sure because I know what you're thinking, so I just want to clean that up. Right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Um. So, that's uh, that's kind of the a view of where we are right now, where the market is. Very um. Cool. You want to flash your? 
Yeah, I want to I want to do one more thing if we can sure. real quick, but let Go me flash it. my newsletter too. If anyone's interested, I've I've pretty much almost finished the newsletter. I was doing it tonight hmm. because I'm going to be busy the rest of the weekend too. Okay. So I'm probably going to get this out later tonight. Nice. But if anybody's interested, just send me a, a note to breakpointtrading at gmail.com and I will add you to the list. So the other thing that I wanted to touch on is Perfect. This chart list right here that Tom Boley produces, and uh, since I'm a member of his site, I, I can get access to it. Mm. These are the, the uh, short squeeze chart list. These are all the companies with very high short, short floats. So that's got to be Bed Bath & Beyond, I'm guessing? Bed Bath & Beyond, 45%, but they're probably going out of business, so that's not what I... Yeah, I'd they just defaulted, or defaulted on their debt, yeah. Right. Carvana though, but here's, here's the interesting one. There's actually a lot of in, a lot of them in here that look like this. I'm going to show you two of them. Okay. So I'll show you Carvana. I think it's Carvana, but anyway, it's fine. Carvana. It's okay. Well, it depends on if you're on the East coast or the West coast. Ah, got it. My, I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe. Actually, I'm going to show you three. So Carvana, if you're from Boston, it's Carvana. <laughs> <laughs> Carvana. All right. So went all the way down here to the low and let's look what's happening. Now, the thing you want to look for with a short squeeze is volume. You want to see volume peaking much, much higher than what normally is. This blue line right here is the average volume. Okay. And you want it to be taking out previous highs. So if you think about this, people that have been short all the way since up here, at yeah, some point, printing they, they got to get out. They got to get they'll out. They'll start yeah. losing money, right? They'll start losing money as this goes up. And unlike being long a stock, you can be long all the way down to zero, but your your losses are defined. Correct. Right? If you are short a stock, your losses are unlimited. Correct. It could go up forever. Right. And if you're short, you'll just continue to lose money all the way up. Think, think about the meme stocks. There was a there was a hedge fund that was taken out by retail. Exactly. That's right. Because they were short. Now were short. look at this one. Look at this one. Beyond Actually, meat. Don't know. Oh, it's beyond meat. Okay. I didn't know what that was. Ooh. Look at that. So this is well, a that's really almost good a example. double. It's almost yeah. a double. Yes. This is a really good example because now you can see here on the chart, it's just been bouncing along sideways. All the way since all the way back in September. All right. So all these people are short. Even people from, from way back here are short. But more importantly, the ones right in through here. And then when it went up and went back down, they shorted again. They shorted again. They shorted again. There's a whole bunch of people that are short right in through here that are now losing money. Oh, yeah. You can see that big spy, the big candle that raced over 20. Yeah, that that is that's somebody that, getting out <laughs> as of today. Yeah, and that's, that's today. That, yeah. And that I think has only just begun. I think yeah, this that's one, that's your 4100 call, right? That's why you think there's a whole bunch of people that are gonna well, get squeezed out, right? Yeah, that's basically what's gonna happen. All the shorts for the whole market. I mean, the S people are short the S P and short the NASDAQ. Oh, got it, got it. Okay. Right. So they're gonna have to cover those shorts. Hmm. But Beyond Meat is a really good example. But the interesting interesting thing to me is there are a lot of these right now. Let's look at Upstart. Yeah, there's a lot of people that have been, yeah. Look at that. Look at the volume down here. That's not as pronounced as Beyond Me, but you know, if this one goes over 20, yeah, that level right there, that could be short covering. Mm -hmm. um, Nicola, which I, I don't know if I would touch Nicola with a 10 foot pole mm -hmm. based on what they did before, but that one's that one's getting there too sure, yeah. Start, starting to getting to that point so there's a whole bunch of them in here and there's there's some of these that are like workhorse is an ev company mm -hmm. and because of what happened with tesla a lot of these ev companies are starting to take off now too yeah, i mean look at that move we went from a dollar 50 to 225 which is a 50 percent move that's right exactly in a very short amount of time um look at pets pets why not Look at that. 
Wow. That went from 18 to 21. Yeah, that's a 20% move. Uh, -ish. Volume. You want to look at the volume because, okay. you know, when, when the market starts going down, you get panic selling. Yep. Exactly. Right. And that's what pushes it down. That's why that's why markets go down faster than they go up. Mm -hmm. You very rarely ever get panic buying. Hmm. Unless it's a short squeeze. Unless it's a that's exactly what a short squeeze is, is panic buying. Yep. Right. Which you rarely will ever get it any other way. Here's um virgin virgin space. Okay. Virgin Galactic. Oh, wow. Look at that. This was down here at uh, three bucks. Yeah, that's a that's month, almost a hundred percent move. That's almost a double right there in a month. Yeah. All right. And the and the volume is just beginning to ramp up. So it's just really interesting on this short squeeze list. Well, I think what's even more interesting is you've you've helped us understand for the last couple of weeks. You've been talking about forty one hundred. You've been talking about all look the at, look at Lucid. It. Look at oh that. my Lucid. goodness. That's on the back Six of to Tesla eighteen. Right yeah. Wow. It, well, it made it to almost eight. It went, it went to eighteen. Yeah, that's what I meant. Six to eighteen. Yeah, that's a yeah, two hundred. Six to eighteen in a month. Well, shoot, it went from nine to eighteen in a day. Right. Yes. It doubled in a day. In a day. And look at the volume. This is a this is a perfect example example of a short squeeze. Yeah. Somebody got look spanked. Look at that volume. I mean, you can see where the volume has been all the way back till the beginning of the year, right? Somebody got somebody got hurt today. Six or seven times the volume. Yeah, somebody Maybe got hurt. More. And this one might not be over. Mm -hmm. This this one could gap up on Monday and keep on going. Now, if I'm reading that candle right, that's telling me it opened it. Did it open at nine or thirteen? Tell me, how do I read that candle? Um, uh, let me show you a ten day. Here's here's today right here. So it opened down. It opened around nine. It actually opened at 8.99. 8.99 it opened. So but at 9 it starts so something happened somebody started to close their position there was no liquidity in the market and they got run up to 18 in a day. Um well here's what happened. Tesla reported. That was that was Wednesday. That's all right. Okay. Tesla reported Wednesday. Tesla started going up. Yeah. Tesla didn't stop by the way. No, Tesla ran, but I'm just trying to figure out. There's a two-hour window from noon to two where somebody got hurt. Oh yeah, oh yeah, right in through here. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. That's somebody that is a short fight. squeeze. Exactly. That is a classic short squeeze. Yeah, that's that's yeah. people buying because of Tesla. Probably right back in here, people buying because of Tesla. But all of this right here are all the people that were short that are that are panic buying. Well, that was not only probably panic buying from people, but that was probably algorithms. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Wow. That's a that's a perfect example. Take a screenshot of that. You can see a two hour window where somebody got spanked. Right. Yeah, that's a that's a perfect example of a short squeeze. This this is a one hour. There's a one hour Ooh. chart. Wow, somebody and closed. That, that's that's not it good. Went, it went from uh basically ten to eighteen within one hour. Yeah. Ouch. So the reason I point this out, uh, other than helping folks understand what a short squeeze really is and how to recognize one. I mean, a short squeeze is the volume. That's what you want to see. Yes. You know, I've had people say, oh, the stock is running up and, you know, could be a short squeeze. I said, well, what's the volume? Oh, it's a little bit higher. Uh, it needs to be a lot higher. Yeah, noticeably higher. Chart higher. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very cool. Um, you know, this here, this is workhorse. There, there's a little bit of volume, but I mean, there's other, yeah. there's been yeah, other there's times other that it's spikes. been even higher than that. Yeah. If it was volume like this, right, that might be a short squeeze. Okay. But the, the, the reason I point this out is because this is the short squeeze chart list right here. Mm -hmm. There are 35 names on this list. Nice. Oh, uh, here's, a, here's another one. W. Look at I don't this. know what that is. That's Wayfair. Oh, Wayfair. Okay. Oh, wow. There's there's an example of volume, the volume, the kind of volume you will see in a short squeeze. Absolutely. Right. So all the people back here that were short all the way back here to September, they're all getting hurt. And this one may not be done yet. Hmm. 
But the reason I bring it up is because there are so many of them yeah. right now on this list. So many like that on this list. Normally, nor usually you'll see a short squeeze on one or two names right. every six months, maybe. Okay. It's very rare that it happens. Now, all of a sudden, it's it's like all those meme traders. The no, no, exactly. On, yep. You're talking about risk on? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a perfect example of people thinking risk is back on again. I agree. And it may yeah. very well be. If uh, if you look at the market, it's been up 17%. If it does what I think it's going to do, we should be at 4,700 pretty quickly. Yeah. Well, you know what, Mr. Bird? I look forward to you doing your solo videos over the next several weeks. Um, I appreciate you. Thank you for stepping up. And I do think this will be your lead in to you having your own YouTube channel, which I think the audience would appreciate. Yeah, Thank I you mean, so much. If, if I could do that, then I'd, I'd be able to do it during the week when things happen. Yeah. So that would be good. And probably what I'll do is just I'll go over some of these charts and do an update on where we are, where the market is, what happened. I think the audience would love that. Great. And Thank watch so uh, Monday and Tuesday. See if we keep going up. We're at 6% right now. The January barometer is a very good indicator. By the way, uh, when I said that uh, 15%, mm -hmm. 4,700, this is yep. this is why. Right here, the, the next February to December, if we're in this upper quadrant, on average, the market goes up 15% okay. for, the, for the 11 months after January. Got it. So if we end around 4,100, 15% puts us at 4,700. Makes perfect sense. I like it. Thanks, bud. All right. Have a good trip.